Lufthansa has just unveiled an ambitious plan, and it's set to change the way we perceive the future direction of aviation. The airline has reportedly decided to ditch Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 engines for its Boeing 787 Dreamliners in favor of GE Aerospace's Gen X engines. Why would one of the world's leading airlines make such a dramatic switch? What's driving Lufthansa away from the Trent 1000, and what makes GE's engines the new favorite? Stay tuned to uncover the fascinating details behind this story. Let's dive in. Lufthansa is reportedly reassessing its decision to use Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 engines for its upcoming fleet of Boeing 787 Dreamliners, citing concerns over the engine's reliability and durability. This shift in perspective highlights ongoing challenges with the Trent 1000, which has faced scrutiny from several airlines in recent years. About the current state of Lufthansa's 787 orders, the airline has 34 aircraft on waiting, with deliveries expected between 2024 and 2028. Out of these, 27 were initially set to be equipped with Trent 1000 engines. The remaining seven aircrafts have no confirmed engine type, leaving room for a potential switch to GE Aerospace Gen X engines, which are all already in use on Lufthansa's existing 787-9 fleet and those operated by group member Austrian Airlines. Aviation data shows that Lufthansa's five current 787-9 aircraft are powered by GNX engines. Austrian Airlines also operates two GNX powered in this fleet, acquired secondhand. The airline group is familiar with the engine's performance and may favor it for operational consistency and reliability. May you query here why the Trent 1000 is losing favor. The Trent 1000 has faced significant challenges since its introduction, particularly during the late 2010 S Airlines reported durability issues that resulted in extensive aircraft downtime. Although Rolls-Royce implemented fixes during the pandemic, supply chain problems and engine reliability concerns have persisted, leading to disruptions in long-haul operations for carriers. And indeed, the numbers have gradually shown their position. As of December 31st, 2016, Boeing had secured 1,497 gross orders for all 787 variants, with 886 of those being powered by the Gen X, while 454 aircraft be powered by the Trent 1000. The remaining 157 aircraft had unspecified engines, which included 787 that Boeing never delivered, such as Aeroflot's purchase of 22787. From 2017 until October 31, 2024, Boeing secured 891 orders for the 787, with aircraft engine choices being split between 640 GE and X, 96 Trent 1000, and 155 unspecified. Clearly, post-2017 has not been favorable for Rolls-Royce and the Trent 1000, with the discrepancy between the two engine backlogs growing ever larger in the past seven years. In addition, some airlines have switched to the other side, including British Airways, which has had to manage its capacity on certain routes due to supply-side issues affecting Rolls-Royce. During the Farnborough International Air Show in July, GE Aerospace announced that the parent company of British Airways, International Airlines Group, has selected Gen X to power six of the British Airlines 787. Other carriers have also switched their fleet engine providers. In December 20, 23, Latham Airlines, which has 37 787 powered by the Trent 1000, announced an order for five of these jets with the airline opting for the Gen X for the Quintet. In October, the South American carrier ordered another then aircraft of the type. While the statement did not explicitly say which engine would power those aircraft, Boeing's orders and deliveries filings revealed that at least five will utilize the Gen X. Meanwhile, GNX engines have demonstrated robust performance and reliability, making them a more attractive option for airlines looking to minimize disruptions. In addition, one of the main reasons airlines could be switching between engines is that one has been performing better than the other. GE Aerospace has boasted that their engines offer 1.4% better specific fuel consumption versus the competition for a 3,000 nautical mile mission. Furthermore, the engine offers three times higher time on the wing, a 99.98% dispatch rate, and a 3% higher annual utilization. The time on wing and annual utilization advantage did not elude to comparison versus its competition. Switching to the Gen X engine would align Lufthansa's future 787 fleet with its existing Gen X-powered aircraft, 
streamlining maintenance and operations. Additionally, the airline group likely values the opportunity to mitigate risks associated with engine-related delays, which could disrupt delivery schedules and fleet planning. Therefore, Lufthansa's decision will have implications for both Rolls-Royce and GE Aerospace. If the German flag carrier opts for the Gen X engine, it would signal a broader shift in the market's confidence towards Rolls-Royce's products, particularly in the competitive wide-body aircraft sector. As Lufthansa continues to evaluate its options, its final decision will likely hinge on a balance of operational reliability, cost considerations, and long-term strategic alignment for its fleet. What do you think about the choice of Lufthansa? Share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to follow aviation's remarkable journey. Next, let's go to other aviation updates. Vietnam Airlines has announced plans to issue a tender for 50 narrowbody aircraft in 2025, a significant step in its strategy to grow its fleet to 170 aircraft by 2035. This ambitious expansion reflects the airline's commitment to meeting surging passenger demand and enhancing its competitiveness in the dynamic Southeast Asian aviation market. At the Association of Asia Pacific Airlines event in Brunei, CEO Le Hong Ha confirmed that the tender will be open to major manufacturers, including Airbus, Boeing, and possibly Comac. In Vietnam, we have to go through the bidding process and the door is still open for everyone. While Boeing's offer was described as very good, the final decision will hinge on the proposals received and approval from the airline's board. The tender presents a rare opportunity for competitors to break into Vietnam Airlines' narrow-body fleet, which currently only comprises Airbus aircraft. Boeing has emerged as a strong contender, bolstered by a memorandum of understanding signed in 2022 for 5737 MAX jets. Although the agreement is non-binding, it signals Boeing's serious interest in securing the order. In the meantime, Vietnam Airlines recently added its first Airbus A320neo, registered VNA513, to its fleet. Delivered in July 20th, 24, the aircraft is the first of three A320neo set to join the airline in 2024, offering 16% better fuel efficiency and supporting increased summer passenger demand. China's Comac is also aiming to penetrate Vietnam's aviation market with its C919 narrowbody jet. During a meeting with Vietnamese Prime Minister Pham Minh Chin, Comac's Deputy General Manager Wei Yingbiao highlighted the country's growth potential and expressed interest in collaborating with Vietnam Airlines. Comac is already in discussions with Viaget, Vietnam's largest private carrier, as it seeks to establish a presence in the region. Vietnam Airlines' potential consideration of the C919 could signal a move to diversify its fleet and reduce reliance on established players like Airbus and Boeing. Diplomatic ties between Vietnam and China, strengthened by recent high-level meetings, may also influence the airline's procurement decisions. This tender underscores Vietnam Airlines' focus on expanding its fleet to maintain its edge in a rapidly growing market. Narrow-body aircraft are the cornerstone of its operations, serving vital domestic and regional routes. By inviting open competition, the airline aims to secure cost-effective solutions, improve operational efficiency, and evaluate options for fleet diversification. Prime Minister Chin's advocacy for increased cooperation with COMAC further highlights the strategic importance of aviation in Vietnam's broader economic and diplomatic goals. While the C919 represents an opportunity for diversification, the established records of Airbus and Boeing in Vietnam will ensure a highly competitive bidding process. As Vietnam Airlines recovers from pandemic-related setbacks, its fleet expansion plan is key to capitalizing on rebounding demand in Southeast Asia. With competitors like Viajet and Bamboo Airways aggressively expanding, the airline's ability to modernize and grow its fleet will be critical to maintaining its position as a leading regional carrier. The 2025 tender represents a major milestone not just for Vietnam Airlines, but also for aircraft manufacturers aiming to strengthen their foothold in one of the world's fastest growing aviation markets. Whether it chooses Airbus, Boeing, or Comac, Vietnam Airlines' decision will shape its fleet and the competitive landscape of Southeast Asian aviation for years to come. So will this opportunity be given to Airbus, Boeing, or Comac? The last news, British Airways met trouble. 
On the evening of November 18th, British Airways experienced a significant IT outage that disrupted communication between pilots and the airline's operations center. The issue, which began around 17 o'clock, affected flights both within and outside the UK, leading to delays and widespread passenger frustration. Similar issues were reported at London Heathrow Airport, BA's primary hub, where several outbound long-haul flights to destinations in the US and Asia were delayed. Although the airline stated that flights were continuing, delays persisted as efforts to resolve the issue were underway. The problem was eventually fixed. The airline apologized to passengers and emphasized efforts to minimize disruptions. About the passenger reactions, they took to social media to express their frustrations, with some reporting delays due to the PC outage and others noting difficulties accessing BA's website and app because of heavy traffic. A passenger stuck in Vienna mentioned being held on a plane for an hour after the issue was resolved. This is not the first time BA has faced IT-related disruptions. In May 20th, 23, the airline canceled dozens of flights due to a technical failure, affecting thousands of passengers. Similarly, global IT glitches have impacted airlines worldwide, demonstrating the industry's vulnerability to such issues. Of course, BA isn't the only airline vulnerable to IT outages. In July this year, several airlines around the world had to ground their planes after a glitch with their systems affected operations. More than 6,000 flights were canceled on a single day with airlines incurring losses. Airlines and airports across various regions, including the US, India, Japan, Australia, the UK, and New Zealand, among others, faced problems with their systems and carriers faced long queues at check-in counters as they had trouble checking in passengers. While the immediate problems were resolved, those accidents highlighted the importance of robust IT infrastructure to avoid future disruptions. That's all for today's episode. Have a safe flight and see you.